Are you sick of Microsoft constantly updating your system with features that you don't need and in some cases even include massive privacy concerns? Maybe you have a PC or laptop that isn't approved to run Windows 11, even though it technically could run it, or you just want to experience something new and exciting. If you're considering switching to Linux, then you're often smacked in the face with its vast number of variants and flavors. So in today's video, I'm going to show you 5 Linux distributions for absolute beginners. The first one on our list is the Linux distribution PopOS. Yeah, the one that Linus nuked a couple of years back. PopOS is not your casual Windows experience. But don't let that fool you. While it looks slightly different, you can expect all your basic functionalities like snapping your windows, being able to quickly adjust your audio, access your network and Bluetooth devices, as well as launch apps via the inbuilt app launcher. If you don't like its default looks, then you can change the taskbar style or the placement of the top bar tools in the settings. Or through the guide that automatically pops up after you first log in. No pun intended. PopOS utilizes its own desktop environment called Cosmic, which at the moment of making this video is completely being reworked from the ground up. It features a global search functionality, which you can also use to launch applications, find certain settings or similar like on macOS, interact with some applications like the calculator, and it's blazing fast at that. You also get access to several workspaces, on Windows known as virtual desktops, which you can quickly switch between. A functionality that is very suitable for single monitor setups, like a laptop screen, and it just works way more seamless than the Windows counterpart. Unlike many other Linux desktop environments, PopOS Cosmic also has great tiling functionality, meaning that all of your open windows get split into certain areas which can then be moved, grouped together and so on. PopOS is also outstanding because of its very good Nvidia support, which unlike AMD or Intel still rely on their own proprietary driver, which PopOS just installs plug and play if you choose the right installation method. If you have more exotic hardware, then you can also download the firmware in the settings menu. Software on PopOS and also all the other Linux distributions later on in this video can be installed via the inbuilt software manager. You simply open it, search for the app you want and download it if it's available. Couldn't be simpler. Let's move on to a more traditional Windows-like experience. Linux Mint. Now as you can see, by default it looks kind of like Windows 10, but reimagined in its own style with the desktop environment Cinnamon. Mint is the go-to Linux distribution that you often see being advertised online, and for good reason. It comes with a small, but good suite of programs, suited for office work, viewing or editing PDFs, and an easy to understand settings app, which doesn't overwhelm you. Its familiar taskbar, the overall feel of the desktop itself, and its settings makes for an easy transition. But it also packs a lot of additional features that you won't find on Windows. For example, Hot Corners, which can trigger many different actions, including this overview, which I really like. Linux Mint also comes with different customization options, which you can further extend by an inbuilt theme browser. Since drivers on Linux work differently than they do on Windows and usually come in the kernel, Linux Mint offers a more bleeding edge version on the website, so that your new and beautiful graphics card can also work properly. Pretty awesome stuff. Sorry, Noes. A more modern design approach with rounded corners, custom icons and great accessibility. Sorin OS strives to be simple by striking a balance between the known and loved Windows 10 and below design philosophy and the more unusual but very helpful workspace approach. It comes with a selection of different customization templates for you to use, the screenshot and recording menu and essentially everything you do feels very efficient and smooth. Sorin OS also comes with better support for Windows apps out of the box, as it automatically redirects you to the necessary application needed to run them. While you could install the Wine dependency on any Linux distribution, it's pretty awesome that on this distro you don't even have to look it up. Since Sorin OS is built on the desktop environment GNOME, you can also create custom right-click templates to quickly generate files that are already formatted in the way that you want and you can also connect to it remotely without much effort. Next on the list is of course Ubuntu. And while many in the Linux community don't recommend it anymore due to some of Canonical's past choices, one thing is still clear. It's still a great Linux distribution for beginners, but also enterprises, which are looking to switch to Linux. 
on Ubuntu, you are the closest to Microsoft solutions. Which is kind of a blessing, but also a curse. But nonetheless, it works. You install it, have great hardware and software support, a big community behind it, and it also comes in many different variants called flavors. That's right, Ubuntu is not just a typical GNOME experience as you might know it. There is also the KDE Plasma version called Kubuntu, Ubuntu Bachi, Cinnamon, the same desktop environment like Linux Mint, Unity and many more. The default one is being built on the latest and greatest release of the GNOME desktop environment and you get access to a very nice looking overview in different workspaces, a big app menu with inbuilt directory support and a, in my opinion, pretty nice looking icon theme. It's also the base distribution of PopOS, Linux Mint and Sorin OS by the way. And last but not least, there is Fedora. Now Fedora might not seem like a beginner's distribution at first, and in some sense that's true, as it doesn't come with all video codecs for hardware acceleration on AMD anymore. In practice however, if you don't have a laptop with an inbuilt AMD GPU that drains your power because of this, then what you get is a Linux distribution that comes with a default GNOME experience, has great software support out of the box and gets updated very frequently. Fedora also serves as the base of some specialized gaming-oriented Linux distributions like Nobara and just like Ubuntu has a very big community behind it. It's also the distribution that I use on my Microsoft Surface and my main gaming PC. Alright then, which one's the best? Well honestly, there isn't one. PopOS and Linux Mint are both very beginner-friendly by offering great hardware support and their own design philosophy. Sorin OS is for you if you like a traditional taskbar approach and a modern and simplistic design. Ubuntu is the good old stuff that sure has sparked some controversies, especially around the software packaging format they use. But in the end, none of this is really a concern for you. Fedora is the one if you want the default desktop environment experience while still being updated and well supported. However, some distributions that are based off it might even be better if you use it for a specialized use case. In today's video you have seen a couple of different Linux distributions that each have their own designs, workflows and features. But which one you choose is entirely up to you. There is no best Linux distribution, since all that matters in the end is how it feels and if you like it. So go ahead, pick the one that you found the most interesting and try it out. All of the mentioned Linux distributions today come with a live environment, meaning that you can run them off the USB stick or whatever other medium you use to install it. If you want to go a step further, then you can also install Linux side by side to Windows, but make sure that it detects it before you format your whole drive. If you need a program to flash your installation files, then I recommend the Fedora Media Writer, which can flash any Linux distro you put into it. And yeah, that's it. 5 Linux distributions for absolute beginners. Let me know down in the comments which one you want to try out. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any more Linux videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.